Welcome everybody to Understanding Banished. Today we are going to be talking about some more tools basics. Uh, in our last video we discussed the simulation speed and tools and report uh, options you had and we talked about the importance of, of understanding the menu and submenu uh, F1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, F1 being the men menu, 1, 2, 3, 4 being the submenus, and F2 all the way through F9. And today we are going to continue our series here, our coverage, and we're going to talk about uh, homes, housing, roads, and bridges, these next two tools. And the next video after that we'll discuss storage, markets, and trade, and town services. It's going to be a little bit of a longer one. So, in this one, you have some, uh, whenever you get a town, you had a couple basic things to know. Wooden houses provide place for citizens to leave, eat, food, store, and stay warm. However, at, whenever you're making the decision to, uh, what type of house you want to put down, whether it's a wooden house or a stone house, you want to make sure you think about the long term. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have done in Banish is in the first, the first building thing that they put down is uh, usually a boarding house. Uh, and it's a high cost, but it's low cost in the long term. It provides temporary housing for everybody in the first two days so you don't lose them. Uh, what I usually do is build a, a, uh, a boarding house in the very first day and have everybody collect a lot of the resources and then what what I do after that as the game progresses I uh, I, I start adding stone houses. Stone houses can be a little bit of a little bit expensive they cost uh, 24 wood, 40 wood, uh, 40 stone and 10 uh, iron so these houses in your first two generations of people you're under 20 you can build every home and stone out of stone houses and the good thing about stone houses is that they they cost a significantly a lot, le a lot, a lot less in your firewood now in case you don't know what I'm talking about in the game you can you can create a forest lodge that uh, cuts or, or you can collect wood and those are called uh, stored logs the stored logs are used for trading or you can be, build yourself a woodcutter and the woodcutter will take the stored logs and turn them into firewood. Firewood um, is, a, is a much better tradable item and depending on how much you have you can, you can store half of what you, what you have into firewood that your houses in your town can use. The moment that you run out of uh, firewood and in, in, in your, you will you will begin you could begin to lose a lot of your your uh, your people and you want to be careful to make sure not to do that. So I usually skip the wooden houses entirely and I go for the uh, boarding house. And then over the next two years of uh, you know uh, I'll cover I'll cover in future videos uh, how to do the first ten years. But uh, over the next two years, the first two years, I began building stone houses, and uh, it it it, ca it uh, creates less of a burden for you in the long run of having to keep up with firewood and all the excess firewood you can use it and trade it and get anything you want and it becomes a wonderful commodity more than the logs do so uh, my recommendation for you is go boarding house and then as you start creating resource centers and collecting uh, things from your landscape build stone houses okay so F4 is roads and bridges and I I loaded this game, this is one of my early games, and it's it's less cluttered, so I wanted to show you a couple things. The first option we have is the dirt road. Uh, the second option is the stone road. So don't worry about the stone road. Uh, really get your population above 50, have a, a steady food supply to make sure that you're able to feed your people and that you're, you don't have, a, you, you, you need to have a quarry and a mine before you begin to think of a stone road. But it, in this in this uh, map right here, I actually have a stone road throughout the entire epicenter of my map. So a, uh, a dirt road will allow your people to move a lot faster than you would think. It's, it actually, it's pretty, it's worth it. So what you do is you, you put it down 
and you drag it to wherever you want to build something and it dumps it down and your workers will come along and start building that um, in time if you want to upgrade that you can follow the path and it won't automatically snap to it so you're gonna have to make sure you can see where they put it down and there is a stone path and that's all it is is a level 2 speed upgrade for your for your for your citizens now I want to talk about wooden bridges in, in tunnels because a lot of people tend to skip them and I think it's a big mistake if you if you've discovered the seeding problem that just about every seed every world that you generate you're gonna your your landscape is completely interrupted by tunnels and uh, in, in, in cities and everything split up and this is part of the puzzle of what is banished you want to make sure that you learn not to be you know you be don't be afraid of creating a bridge because these are just minor obstacles a a, a hill or a mountain is an inconvenience but when once you build a tunnel through it it's just something you can walk straight through it's just like another river and it's no big deal so in order to do that you want to make sure now let me see if I can find a free tunnel uh, okay you want to make sure you have a green spot open if you, up here red won't work green and then you drag it all the way through until you find another green spot and let's see if I can find one Ooh spot green spot Ooh, there's a big one okay so let's see mm -hmm. gotta find a mountain I can go through uh, maybe maybe no. there so, uh, almost there you go and that creates a fast path that your people will be able to go through and here I have one built and here is a road and then if I need them to go drop off materials here they can either they can get, walk through here quickly and ah look at this well, something I'm missing is a, uh, a road there and these are things that that you'll miss if you, when you're not zoomed in you know when you're zoomed out like that it's really hard to tell but when you zoom in and you get to a place where you're pretty happy with your people you you can go back and add some of these finer details so guys uh, roads how as uh, houses and roads need to be built around your 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 town uh, in, in future episodes what we're gonna do is we're going to be talking about the layouts a lot of people I think are messing up in the game because they they try to think of their towns like they think of their town where they build everything in the center and they wonder why they they uh, their people are dying or they can't get them to populate and the way you build and place your buildings in the game it matters it's really important where you place them and then how you get your people there so in this tutorial is just a brief explanation of the tools and when and where to be able to use them it's very short in future episodes like I said at first I'm gonna describe and talk to you about all your uh, your production your, your little different tool ba uh, bars and in the end what I'm gonna do is is uh, I'm gonna pull out my city and I'm gonna explain to you why I've built these things in the way that I have and it's been in trial and error and then my final video is going to be how to survive the first 10 days using the same concepts that I described in every single video and I'll reinforce it so some of you might want to skip ahead to that final video but uh, like I said uh, thank you for watching guys uh, leave a comment give me a thumbs up and uh, I appreciate you I'm the Urban Watcher thank you for watching